everyone and welcome to this first episode of Code R. In this series, we'll be solving some programming problems in Python. This is problem number one. So without further ado, let's begin. And today, we're going to be solving this problem. Now, the link to the problem will be in the description. And the problem is that Ashu and Arvind participated in a coding contest. As a result of which, they received N chocolates. Now, they want to divide the chocolates between them equally. Can you help them by deciding if it is possible for them to divide all the N chocolates in such a way that they get each an equal number of chocolates? You cannot break a chocolate in two or more pieces. Okay, so first let's break down the problem. The problem is basically that we have two friends and they received this number of chocolates and they want to divide the chocolates between them. Simple, right? Uh, and we can't break any of the chocolates to make them half. In the output format, it says for each test case, we have to output the answer on the new line, yes, if they can divide the chocolates or no, if they cannot. All right, so let's try to solve this problem. So this is the basic idea of the problem. The two friends received N chocolates and they want to divide it between themselves equally. We have to write a program to see if they can equally split the chocolates between them. Now, before starting the actual program, we want to write the algorithm so that we can easily uh, solve the program. So, this is going to be our basic algorithm. Let's do this. So, step one, we'll break this down into steps. First of all, obviously, we need to take n chocolates as input. n can be any integer. And yeah, step two is going to be the main part. Now, the way we want to check if they're equal is that we need to check if n is divisible by two. Because if we check if, if it's divisible by two, we can break them into two parts since it is divisible by two. And then the third and final step, if n is divisible, by two uh, we have to return yes else no okay so that's our basic algorithm taken care of now we'll first write the parameters that we'll take as input and yeah the rest of it so first uh we're gonna write at the rate of parameters this is how you show the parameters it says that in the input format the first line of input will contain a single integer t denoting the number of test cases we need to take the test cases uh, so number of test cases and we also need to take n as in the number of chocolates so we're just gonna write number of chocolates now we'll write what we're gonna return to make it easy so we're gonna return uh, yes slash no that's basically all we're returning, right? Yes or no, depending on if it's divisible by two. All right, now we can start with the actual code. Okay, let's begin. First, we have to take the number of test cases. So we'll take, uh, at, let's say we say test cases and we take it as int of input. Bruh, the input function uh, it's, a, it's an inbuilt method which takes input from uh, the custom input that we give is uh, this is the custom input and this is our desired output that we want. Uh, and the reason we're doing int is because when we take input, the default type of the value is string. We cannot perform any calculations with strings. So we need to convert it back to an integer. Now we'll take 4i in range test cases what this will do it takes let's say uh yeah obviously the number of test cases here is four so this will this is a loop this loop will run four times and repeat the code multiple times as in it will loop four times now that we've done that we see that the next one uh, of input is the first and only line of each test case contains a single integer n, the number of chocolates that they received. First and foremost, it says each test case. That's why you have to run a for loop. And uh, yeah, so 
let's say it's num of chocolates. And obviously we're doing int input. Now this is doing for each test case. So it takes input not only once, but four times since it's running a for loop for four. Now we can begin with step two because that was step one, take n chocolates as input. Now step two is that we need to check if n is divisible by two. Now, how do you check if a number is divisible by something? To check this, we use an if condition. If is a condition, uh, it creates a condition that if it returns true, it goes in the block. Also, it's called a block because as you can see, there's a tab space here and it shows that this is inside the loop and not outside the loop. So we need to check if the number of chocolates percentage, now percentage here is actually modulo two, is equal to zero. Now what modulo does, it takes the division of these two and instead of taking the quotient of that division, it takes the remainder, the remaining value. Now if, uh, if it's zero, it means that there's no remainder and it, it is divisible. Now that's how you can check if a number is divisible by two or really divisible by any number you wanna check. Now we need to do step three, which is the final step and we need to check if n is divisible by two, which we checked obviously, uh, then we have to return yes, else no, because as you can see, the return statement says yes slash no. So to output an answer, we need to use the print function. Uh, the print function takes a value and outputs it in this, uh, well, it's not there yet because we haven't done anything, but in this box, which will appear shortly and uh, the way this works is that this is a string value and if we do this with that string let's say if we just do yes it will give an error because yes in this case is a variable now we haven't defined this variable anywhere have we right so this is uh, taken as a variable if we did quote here this would not make sense because you're you, you take a value and set that value to a value and you can't do that. So here we need to put this in quotes. Now we could do it uh, normally and we could use an else block though this is basically checks that if this condition does not actually uh, work, like it doesn't go in the if block, we call this an if block, then it goes in the else block. We could just do simply and print no else, but that's kind of boring. We don't wanna do it too simply do we? Else is like, this is simple. You could, you could do this code normally too. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, we are going to go back in this if block, right? We're going to type this keyword, which is continue. And as you can see, if we press enter, it immediately puts you out of the block. This is because what continue does is that um, if it is called, then it uh, refuses to execute the rest of the code in the blocks of four. Now this only works with loops and the types of loops we have are for and while. So those are the only ones it works with. It does not execute the rest of the code and it immediately moves on to the next uh, iteration. Now we call this an iteration. So it actually doesn't start with one, it starts with zero. It starts with zero, it goes one, it goes two and three. It does not go to four because we start from zero, obviously. So this is four times. So what continue does is that it immediately, let's say we are on the one index, we call this index, and we use the continue statement. Now what this will do, it will uh, ignore the rest of the code and go on to the next index. So it will move on to two. So that's why it's helpful. Uh, and that's why it immediately goes out of the block once you enter because you won't be doing anything else there because if you will, then why are you putting the continue statement there anyway? <laughs> anyway, so now that you've done continue, it's easy to just print no directly since it if this is true, it won't actually reach this statement. This statement will not be executable for the code since it has continued to the next index and therefore it will not execute this. Now, if this returns false, it won't even reach this continue statement and therefore it will not 
print yes and it will reach this code and it will execute it so it will print no instead that's it for our code actually it, it was pretty simple now we just need to take this input go into custom input and type all the sound so 410 432 and then you're gonna click on run it says submission queued and as you can see, you just got to wait here and boom, it shows this box, this little handy box, shows the input that you gave and the output as well. This is the output box. Now, as we can see, uh, we got yes, yes, no, yes. And this was the desired output, as you can see. Yes, yes, no, yes. And while we write it, we might as well see why these, well, why they return yes, yes, no, yes. Let's see. Let's compare this input and see how it does in the code so first the number of chocolates that we have is 10 so let's see so is 10 divisible by 2 well it is so it prints yes and yeah it does print yes and next is 4 now 4 comes in 4 is divisible by 2 yes or no yes it is so it prints yes okay now we get 3 now 3 comes in it goes here it sees that 3 is not divisible by 2 as because the 3 modulo 2 gives 1. So it won't come here. So it won't go to this continue statement and it will reach the print no. And that's why it prints no. Right? Okay. And then it moves on to the next one which is 2. And of course 2 is divisible by 2. Why wouldn't it be? And it prints yes. So that was our first code on CodeChef. Uh, you can solve this on yourself and yeah, so that's gonna be it for today's episode If you enjoyed it or learned something new then make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel If you have any doubts then feel free to ask in the comment section below. See you guys next time Wait.